potager again in the summer heat. I mean, the, really, the gardens really are at their best now. Well here I am ready to do another impressionist work in the potager and it's really coming out now, these beautiful hollyhocks in the background. I'm going to wait for a bigger one a bit later when that's out a bit more and hopefully there'll still be some poppies. I missed yesterday, it's been blisteringly hot here, it's now like Africa so I had to wear, I have to wear a hat and so on, it's going to get very hot. Early morning light, want to catch it before the poppies start to drop because by afternoon they all start dropping off. So we'll have a go at 24.30 here um, with the acrylics again trying to slap paint on and get beautiful colours, really push the colours and uh, I want to get more vibrant. It's getting a bit dead recently again, um, especially these, these, these uh, I prefer, in some ways I prefer to be using oils, but um, I don't want to set a whole palette up just for this. As you saw the other day I'd used uh, oils over acrylics, here just acrylics today. Light against dark, warm against cool, nothing against smooth. Let's play these colours one to another and try and get the sunlight coming through. I'm going to move the composition around a bit. There are all sorts of lovely compositions to do here now as well. I have more guests coming soon and I'm sure they'll enjoy this, as hopefully I still will. Now you see just how glorious this place can be, these compositions now. Absolutely glorious, isn't it? Right, better get on with it. OK, let's hope the colours will show well enough here. I have to decide first of all. And my composition. And uh, how much I take in. It's a difficult composition. Uh, oh yeah, right there. And the tree is more, more central here. Put the tree more central there. And, uh, all these lines don't worry me too much, we're going to paint over them anyway, just to work out where things are going. Then that there, and then that there, and that there. Yeah, that's going to have to do, well let's get on with it. No time to waste. Oh, I'm going to start with flat brush today. And let's work this guy up. That's quite... Uh, Ah, against those yellows, so I've got to have something that will show against the yellows. A lot of flies today as well. Tree straight in with some purple. Just so I can get covered and get started. And the sun is directly into my eyes, so it's quite fun already getting this effect of light. And these gorgeous deep colours are happening within this. Money would have loved this garden, I think, as well. Before I can even put these foreground colours on, I've got to get these darks in. And right down through here as well as they get warmer into the greens. Get these underpaintings done first, I believe, to get the colours over the top shortly, and then I'll really start to try and find them. Get down into there. If it was oil, in some ways it would be easier because I can blend in more afterwards. I've got to go across this fairly quickly now to work these colours up. Warm darks and cool darks in here. But I've got to get in first of all now before I can. Lovely colours now. That's just about got my background blocked in, so I can start putting lighter colours on in a minute. White and cadmium and orange at the minute. And I'll put other colours over that to try and get it to gleam as an impressionist piece. Seems a bit crude at first, but uh, it needs must, and I must get these colours on. If I don't work quickly like this, I will not be spontaneous either and I want to be spontaneous in this work. Lather it on, plenty of paint because this paint's not that thick even though some of it is heavy body it's not as heavy body as I might like. I'll put more green back into glue in there in a minute because it, it needs springing out with the cooler colours. Let's just get some texturing, explosive texturing in there as these trees come out. The marks, as I was saying to my student yesterday, making your marks about what is there. I think that's important. I mean, everybody can paint in their own way. Just 
tuned head yesterday, a lovely woman, um, but she's so aware of wanting to paint in her own style and develop her own style that she's afraid of taking on information easily, readily and trying it from uh, a teacher, which makes it very difficult for me if I can't, um, if I'm aware of that, all I could do was show her let her sit by me as I painted and then she could use as she wanted but I couldn't come round and say well do this or try that because she was fighting it underneath I felt um, which doesn't, doesn't aid us does it? Right, a little more of that pink coming into there as it comes around here maybe I do want that bit of that stuff as well Right, that gives us a nice bright sky and then I want to come into that with um, some very light blue to really get that vibrance going in a minute. Let me just come first with some deeper blues back into here to get the feeling of this against the light here. A bit of a breeze now. I hope it doesn't start blowing my canvas away because I've not got the canvas actually pegged down very well here. It's just leaning against the Googles against warms and lights against darks constantly here now. Nice big loose strokes and really enjoy pushing these colours. I'm trying to find them. I've got to mix all these different greens yet. I'm just using them for the palette at the moment. It's a bit of cheating, but I will find my way. I'm putting these colours out in a minute. All I'm doing at the moment is just finding out, establishing where things are because I haven't drawn them in. I've only done the basics and just whereabouts in the composition I want things really push these colours. I've got the sun all day today with a bit of luck so I'll be able to, this time I'll be able to find the colours without the fear of them disappearing on me. I have to hint at all of these leaves and things down here and just find the lights and darks a bit and get the feeling of these. The marks are about what is there, I'm not painting in what is there. More water, I want to use the tip of my brush more. I'm using the flat. Um, edge to get my textures and lines here. Oh, it's lovely doing this. I much prefer this to the painting I did yesterday. I'll work on that painting and I'll make it happen. I'll go back into it with um, lights and darks more because it disappeared on me. Let's have a look at this. Starting to see things begin to happen now as this painting takes shape. And there's a lot more orangey colour going on down through where those pinks were here. And into here where the light shines through there. And certainly those light greens are coming up into here where we've got this lovely... Now I do want a brush that's going to work here. This brush is a bit more thick at the edges now, so I've got to consider whether I want to use this or whether I need to go to a different brush. So let's make a very, very light, oh, and I'll go to turquoise even now. Yeah, let me take a turquoise green and some white, make a very, very light turquoise green. Maybe that's too dark, let's just have a little look and see, because I really do want this light back here. That's not shining at the moment, put that into where it belongs, I can see where these colours come. It does come into the background here anyway. So it's not just one colour when we're doing something like this. We've got to consider that it's one colour over or next to another that will make things really work. I'll take some very deep magenta. I've got to put it on very heavily because it's going to sink. And talking about that colour of blue, it comes in against these hollyhocks as well. And we have the, the cools against the warms here to make those pinks work. Let those dry off a bit. In fact, while we're at it, we'll plaster more on because it's just going to sink this colour. I know what it's like, especially in acrylics. In oils, it's much better, it's much stronger. That's why I quite like painting the oils over the acrylics afterwards because we get these much stronger, richer colours, which I've got to build up with acrylics to make them work, especially with these sort of, so much medium in, the, in these ones that it's not easy. And then 
to bring those pink poppies down. They come down into here and off towards the edge of the canvas here as well, which I quite like. The petals are coming down here and off the canvas here. I've got a nice circle and it's leading the eye around the painting here. Let's really take these reds and enjoy them for what they are. Again, they look very thin on here. I've got to really plaster them to make them work. So look at these beautiful reds we're getting now then. And the thing is starting to come alive. I'm just, I can start to see where I've got to paint now as the sun gets high. And so thank God I've got my hat on. I'll be in real trouble today. Now there's some lovely dark poppies coming down here. Um, yes, right into here. So much happier doing something like this. And I say when it's a bit bigger, a holly hock, and if the other flowers are still out, I might do a great big one out here. Now I'm starting to loosen up and see my colours more. Okay, now I need to look at the yellows. So I'd better go down a brush now. I used to flat all the way through this. Let's go down to... to what? That's a quarter inch, but I think maybe a bit too small. That's what do I need. Well... Maybe I'll work with a quarter inch. And I'm going to start with quite a dull yellow, with the yellow ochre, because I want to really make them sing as I go along. Now if I start with a dull yellow now, I can make those much stronger and they'll become the shadow. You can see they're just starting to glow, but they're not anything like they need to be yet. It's interesting to see how that works against the um, reds here as well before I put any brighter orange in there. That needs to dry a bit before I try putting yellow over it. In the meantime, let's go back to the pinks. You see how they've sunk? I mean, I put in really bright slabs of magenta there and this stuff just disappears. So let's take some white, which is a good body colour. It will be thicker, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy body white anyway. And a bit of that magenta. I've got to put some cream into it in a minute as well, but just try that first of all. And let's try and get these very light poppies that are down here. It's really going to make me look at my colours today, which is good. And the difference that makes immediately, that's the point, it's immediate. The heat of this summer's day, I've got to go back to more blues in a minute. I really must have got to hit these blues in here too. Very, very light. You never know what your best painting is going to be. You never know if this one of them might take off and later it will be a famous painting. Who knows? This could be the one. I just don't know. Right, I think the orange is a bit more up here. This has dried up a bit more now and I've got a chance to come back in. You see how the red has just disappeared. This acrylic, I've got to work over it again. So we've got to work the oranges and we've got to work the yellows now. And the yellows are going to be a pain because they do tend to sink. But, um, right, I was saying about the cool colours, we've got to play the cools against the warm, so I'm going to take some cobalt blue and a bit of white now, and have a look at the cool shadows on some of these petals here, which are coming in, and look at the difference that makes against the reds, you see. And now we're getting the, the effect of pink by having the shadows painted in. Those cool colours now that are going to play against this, one colour against another. And again the difference that that makes. I want to move on to the yellows on here. I'm going to take some chrome yellow now and work onto these. Um, where are we now? Here, here, here. Start to work onto these uh, marigolds. The nice rich colours at first before I try doing much, much darker. Just catch the tips of these leaves in a moment. I'm going to paint the whole things in across. Look at where the colours hit. You're painting with light now. You're no longer painting with paint really. It's, it's lovely. It's, uh, you know, you can this is what the Impressionists were about. They were painting with light, atmosphere, the moment, colour, playing one against the other and really enjoying those things. And it starts to come alive, doesn't it? 
back with our greens again. A little more yellowy green, I think, here in the background. The sun's really up now, but I want to play these lots of branches that are up here. We've got these. Um, we've got these nice orange and yellows here on the flowers, bringing them into the poppies a little bit now. Even the pink poppies can have a bit of them. I'm going to take some purple and go into my poppies. My paints are starting to dry in this, in this intense heat. <coughs> I need to get these lovely darks against lights here on the poppies to make those reds work. Tremendous difference. So I'm going to use my very light cadmium towards lemon yellow with white and I've got to make a very light strong yellow now. I'm going to have to use some white because it just won't have the body otherwise. And let's look at, I, mean, I might make this a bit darker yet in a minute, but let's look at these lovely light bits of petal that are coming up onto here now. See how that's going to work. So that's, I'm going to make a bit darker first. That's too, too light at the moment. We want to go in a little bit more yellow. more yellow still. Not easy to get that just that right colour. It's not too yellow and it's not too too, too cool either. But now we'll just start to bring up these lighter yellow. Explaining it right the way through so you know why I've done what, not just what I've done. We've worked from mediums to darks with we're now working up the highlights on top of things and we're now painting with light rather than feeling we're painting with paint. If you haven't painted marigolds before, this is a good way to do them. And I've got to go a bit darker into them yet too. I'm not, um, I've only just done a medium orange and yellow so I haven't really hit the much, much lighter um, of some dolphiniums that have um, just shown the sort. I hope they come out better next year. They're really coming. Uh, that's about here. So let's see if I can just find those. That lovely. I'm going to use these. You see, it's funny how this blue now, this ultramarine blue, looks purple against the rest of the colours I've got because it's a warm blue. Right, and back to the blues. Um, I want more turquoise happening. these foreground leaves here in places. Like a rich tapestry of colour. So I'm much more pleased with this painting than I did yesterday. It, you know, I wasn't inspired yesterday at all. Couldn't get going and I would have to work on that one again because I just wasn't in the mood. How much more to do? I'd like those poppies to sing out a bit more, I must admit. And the greens aren't quite as light as I think we can go yet in places. Let's really pick up on those yellow greens now. Even the direction that those leaves go there helps to break up that edge and give us more light. And they're very important things. We, we sort of tend to forget them because we're so busy with the big things and the flowers and all sorts of things. We forget that these minor things here, or seemingly minor things, are actually quite important the way that they they're a light against dark with these little stems coming up through here. When I do a big one silly it's going to be even more fun and maybe I will enjoy it because I've enjoyed this one. And the hollyhocks will be out even more then. Right against darks and darks against lights. We'll just take some some warms and so on and just go amongst the colours one to another to make sure that I'm getting this feel of I'm not just making up this yellow flowers, it's brown flowers, whatever it's you know, um, we've got to make sure we get a bit of green inside that 
fine with him. And it is very bright out here. How it'll look back in duller light is hard to say. It can work both ways. Um, okay, we'll just come back with some whites, some pure whites. Now we've gone to our, our darks and blacks, and I don't use white till the very end, if at all, because it's a reserve colour. I need to save it in just in case I need it at the end to go. I can't go lighter than white, that's the thing. Like this. A little bit more shadow. It's looking a bit duller, but I think with the varnish it will come out again. Yellow could be a bit more yellow in the flowers here, but I don't think we're far out. Right? Right, let's leave that at that. Well, it's been a sweltering day, but great fun. I'd like to do a bigger one, really push the colours, Bob. How can I push more than that? I don't know, with these acrylics. Unless I say I put some oils out at the end of it, and I may do that for the great big one, we'll see. Varnish it and see how it looks first, anyway. But it's been good fun, much better than being on the river yesterday, although I work on another one in the studio in a different way altogether. These paints are starting to dry out now in the heat. I need to put some water in, so we'll take it indoors. <laughs> inside now and on this I'm much much happier with it. I'll show you the colours now on uh, the photograph which would be better than on the film here. Mm -hmm.